Hey there, it's Ben Housel, and here in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at Digital Product 669's Comic Pack, which is a transition pack for Final Cut Pro 10. And we're going to be having a look at how you set up the transitions. This is going to involve a little bit of masking um, using the Draw Mask tool, um, which is a useful tool to learn um, anyway. So if you're interested in learning that, then keep watching. Um, we're also going to have a look at how we, once we've applied the transitions, um, how we modify the settings, things like color and uh, the blending of the color in the Comic Pack um, to the color of your original video. Um, so if this kind of tutorial, tutorial review is something you're interested in, um, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button and you'll get a little update whenever I post a new video. Um, some are sponsored reviews like this one, um, others are just kind of pure tutorials for Final Cut Pro 10. Um, but without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at how we work with the comic pack from Digital Products 669. So let's dive in and have a look at how we work with the comic pack from Digital Product 669 that's available on FX Factory. Now the first thing you'll need to do is install um, FX Factory, um, which is a plugin manager for Final Cut Pro 10. Um, you can purchase plugins through it and you'll find the freeze frames comic pack on there. So I'll leave all the links below so if you like the pack you can go and uh, check it out. Um, and basically the first thing uh, we're going to do is once we're in Final Cut Pro 10 we need to choose a clip and where there's a good moment where we can freeze frame. And we're gonna use this short clip here um, where this lady puts on her sunglasses um, and then she does a nice little fold of the arms um, which we're gonna adjust the speed off slightly um, and then we're gonna make a freeze frame and use that for the freeze frame transition. So let's clear off what we have on the timeline currently. And basically the first step is to drag down the clip to the timeline. There's no sound on this clip. If you have sound on your clip, you may want to drop it down. Um, if you're using the freeze frame, then there's not going to be any uh, sound on that at that particular point. And we're just going to play this back. And basically, at this point, when she starts putting the sunglasses on, we're just going to use the range selection tool to select an area of the clip so that we move a bit more quickly to the crossing of the arm. So it's this kind of crossing of the arms here and the tipping of the head that we're looking for. So I'm going to speed this up. So I've made my selection. I'm going to come up to the retiming options and we'll select fast and we'll select four times and then we'll just give this a playthrough and see how it works. Okay. So this little snap of the head, we're going to have it move a little bit faster. So I'm going to change this. Again, with the range selection tool, we can kind of ramp the speed a few different ways. So sunglasses on, moves a bit faster, and then it's around about here that we're going to add our freeze frame. So basically I'm going to deselect everything here. So jump back to my selection tool, deselect everything, and then at this particular point in time, just after the tip of the head, we're going to add our freeze frame. So I'm going to position my playhead here, and to create the freeze frame we can either go up to the edit menu and then choose add freeze frame or we can use the shortcut Alt or Option and F um, to add the freeze frame. So basically that's going to add a freeze frame in here. So basically once we've added the freeze frame and um, we need to use the, the draw mask tool to outline the selection that we want to kind of pop out in our comic style. I'm going to come to my effects on the right hand side and we're going to scroll down here to the masks effects and it's the draw mask effect that we're looking for. We'll drag this onto our clip and you'll see this little message at the bottom of our clip now with it highlighted that says click to add control point. Now before I do that, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and we're going to begin to draw around um, our person. Now you can be as accurate as you feel you need to be um, with this. Um, for some clips, it's not necessary to be 100% accurate. But basically I'm going to click around and once this is kind of rendered out in the comic book style, we lose a little bit of the detail anyway. And we're going to use this little red box here to move around. So I've zoomed in to 200% and now I can move around. If I click and hold, I can make a little curve here. And we'll just come around roughly for this particular clip. So we'll speed this up. Um, you don't need to watch me cutting out, but basically draw around your shape and then come back to the first point and close off the shape. And you may find you want to zoom out the 25% when you get to certain edges 
of it so that you can see the edges of your clip. So we'll keep going around here. And if we make a mistake, we can always modify uh, the edges as well. So we'll come all the way up the hair. And you can see here at the top, when we reach the edge, we can't kind of get above that edge. So that's why we want to zoom out to 50% or even 25% so that we can add some control points off the edge of this image. And again, we'll zoom back in and continue. And at any point, we can kind of move these control points around. So if we mess up, we can drag them into the right spot or we can right click and delete them if we've really messed up. And then now we're down at the bottom um, of our image again. So I'm gonna zoom out one more time to 25% so I can see that edge of that image and I can come back across and then zoom back in to 200% so that we can keep this cut out nice and accurate. And then once we get back to the beginning, we'll just need to find that first point again. And it's at this point that we can close that off by clicking back on the first point and we have our cutout. And we can modify things like the feather, uh, stuff like that as well. I'm gonna leave this at uh, zero. We can invert the mask as well. Um, but basically I'm gonna leave all these settings um, as is and we'll just zoom out to fit and we'll deselect the draw mask and now we'll play this through and you can see we now have our cutout and this is where we're gonna add our freeze frame to. So I'm gonna grab the blade tool and drop it right in the middle here and then we're gonna come across to our transitions on the right hand side and you'll find your transitions in this freeze frame folder. So we're gonna have a look at adding a couple of these and we'll go for style number one, uh, first of all. Uh, and in some of the styles, there are different versions of that style. So if we drag this onto the timeline, you can see basically what happens is, and we'll stretch, I'm gonna go back to my selection tool. I don't want the blade tool selected for any longer than I need it selected. We can stretch this out and I'm gonna zoom in just to trim down the beginning of this clip. And I found that when I'm working with this, sometimes it's hard to get rid of this very first uh, frame. So I'm basically marking an in point and an out point at exactly the same spot, which is selecting that frame and deleting it. So now we can zoom out or hit Shift and Z. And if we play this through, then we'll see our freeze frame will work nicely. Now, a couple of things about this, I found also that uh, the animation, uh, the offset here um, for the character that you're placing in there, um, sometimes we need to offset that a little bit more. Um, and to do this, if we trim down our clip a little bit more, I'm gonna select the, the first clip here and I can basically now, if I change the position here, I can position this so that it makes sense we want the face to be visible and then stretch out my animation and if we play this through you'll see there's a little bit of a doubling up there um, of these two clips so basically um, what I found was if we select this first clip make a note of the exposition so minus 199 I'll just type that in so it's the same here and for this second clip minus 199 and now if we stretch this out and play this through you can see we get that nice animation of the faces in the right place so for some of the settings you'll control um, through the transition and some of the settings you'll control actually in the freeze frame you created which we're basically hiding um, as we stretch out uh, this transition so at the end as well when this transitions back you can see we get that nice transition back to the moving image. And also there's a little bit of clip to trim down at the end here as well. So I'm gonna mark an in point using I and then delete and that will delete that 
we basically want this to transition right back to the original clip. So in the freeze frame transitions, once we've added them, um, if you highlight the transition itself, you can see we've got our own text that we can add. So we've got text holder number one. We can type in our own type here. And if your text is too long, um, you can see I can offset this. So I've got text holder one here and we've got text two offsets here as well, which would be this text up here. So I can basically offset uh, the different text elements. So I can bring this back so it's visible if my text is too long. And again, we can also increase the size of our text as well, modify it um, in the controller just below each of the, the text boxes. So you can see here, I've got some text that kind of appears off the edge of my transition that shows up when we get the actual animation there. And we can modify all, all of these options and their offset as well. So if we hang on for this to render, and once it's rendered, we will play it through. So let's have a look at one other style here. So if we grab all of our clips here, we're gonna copy these, come to the end of our timeline and we'll paste them in. And we'll just zoom out a little. So we have our video, our freeze frame that's already cut out, our still, and then we'll delete this and our video seems to have got mixed up a little bit there in the order. So basically we've got our freeze frames, they play through, and then our video at the end. So now if we come to style three, we'll drag this on to our gap, and we'll stretch this out as well. Trim this down at the beginning. And we'll just zoom in and trim off this extra frame at the beginning. So now you can see we have a nice freeze frame. And with some of the transitions, and um, this is the reason for showing this one, you'll notice that you have um, this remap opacity. So we're remapping to these two colors. So basically the, the black is remapping to a certain color. So we can change that. And the white is remapping to a certain color as well. So we can change that. And you can change the color in a couple different ways, either by clicking, either by clicking on one of these boxes or by dropping down the menu and choosing a color that you want. So if we drop this to kind of a blue green and then and then this to a kind of dark browny red, I think that looks pretty nice. You can see we can mix back in the original color so we can add more of a tint to that rather than a kind of full remap of the colors. Okay, and then we have all the same text controls, the same text offsets, and everything that we had in the clips before. So you can see we get that nice animation. And then we can hold the freeze frame for as long as we want, depending on how long we have our transition running for. So if we shorten the transition here, we need to trim these down as well. Then when we play this through, Again, we need to trim off this frame at the beginning and the frame at the end as well. And now if we zoom out, we can play this. Now if we zoom out, we can wait for this to render. We'll go to Shift Z and just hang on for a second. Okay, so you can see really quickly and easily, we can make these very complex animations that would otherwise take a long time to create if you're animating them yourself in Apple Motion. Um, I hope this tutorial has been useful. Um, certainly there's a lot of very cool Final Cut Pro 10 plugins out there and transitions and effects. Um, and this is definitely a, a nice one um, that I've seen. And I hope this is useful for you and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.